Facebook, Facebook, how you doing? So today we're gonna have a little biz talk while I sip this popcorn. We're gonna talk about marketing in the in the time frame that you're in. You see, the problem is a lot of people think that they can still just build a store, open up a company, and the people are just gonna show up. It doesn't work that way anymore. And nowadays you gotta market your company. You can't just sit there and oh I'm just gonna build a website. I'm just going to open up a Facebook account, an Instagram, and then I'm not hardly ever going to do anything on it. I'm every now and then I'm going to put something on it. Now, what you see me right doing right now is that I'm sifting the popcorn to make sure we get the small pieces out. So we got to have the big pieces. Then you got to wash your hands about 50 11 times. Every time you touch anything that's, um, that's not uh, of the usage of making the popcorn, you got to wash your hands. And we're also making some caramel over here on the side, so we multitasking. Now, I might get a customer that might walk in. If we do, we just gonna keep going. You know, we're gonna take care of the customer, then we're gonna come back and talk. But if you got any questions, you know, feel free to ask any questions. Just hit it on the chat. Let me know what you got, what questions you may have. Now, like I said though, people think that, okay, I'm gonna open up a company. When I put it in my location, and location is very important, that the people are just gonna show up. Now, true, if you pay for premium location where you already got foot traffic, you already got that good drive-by traffic, then yeah, you may not have to do as much marketing as the next guy. But you, in today's world, with today's level of competition, you still gotta get out there and market, but you can't market like you used to. There are people out there still doing mailers. I mean, let's be honest, people. When you get your mail, do you open you got to think about it. who is your customer and when you think about your customer does your customer receive their information the same the way that you receive yours I mean if, if you are your customer but let's say your customer now if your customer is older people let's say in their 60s 70s not as many of them are on Facebook not as many of them are on Instagram and snapchat and those types of things or on musically or medium and all these other kind of programs so yeah for those people if you're like, say you sell medical devices or something, your method is probably going to the doctor's office, the clinics, and getting them to buy in, sending out mailers, things like that. But if those people aren't, um, if that's not your customer, if your customer is someone who's in their 20s, their 30s, you know, their 40s, you know, even in their 50s, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram. So you're gonna to have to market on those pages, but here's the deal. Your message is very important. What are you saying to them? How are you grabbing their attention? Because just like you're on there, so is everybody else. So your message has to be something that they gravitate towards, that interests them, that causes them to look deeper into your product. Because you could do like a YouTube video, and so what if you got 3,000 views, 8,000 views? See how we got all the holes? This is how we sip the popcorn. Make sure all the small people fall out. Doesn't matter how many views you have, you can have all these views, but then you can look at your analytics and see, well, how long are they staying on? How long are they viewing it? Are they viewing my video for five minutes? Is the average view time five minutes on a 30 minute video? Is my average view time eight seconds on a two minute video? And the thing about it is that when you make that video, you gotta question yourself, ask yourself questions. Does the title catch their attention? All right, maybe your title does catch your attention. Now, as soon as you catch their attention, are you giving content that's going to keep them interested? And when it comes to that content, you have to decide, am I gonna be informational? Am I transformational? Am I giving them you know, a knowledge base for safety reasons or, you know, depending upon your product, what am I giving them? What am I providing? How am I enticing them? That's your question that you have to ask. So you can't um, just throw any kind of information and say, oh, I opened up a restaurant and our food is good. No, you, <laughs> you can't just open up a restaurant and think that it's good. You got to let people know it's good. Why is your product good? What makes your recipes better than the other person's recipes? Like, let's say there, um, there's a young lady I went to school with. She opened up a soul food restaurant. Yeah, she's getting that support from the community that we grew up with. But if you want that additional support, then talk about your recipes. Talk about why your recipes are so good. Like this chicken, this 
cornbread. This this cornbread is so good because we use the best milk, buttermilk, whatever. I don't know how to make cornbread, but whatever you use to make it, talk about that product. Get people interested in your product by telling what? Tell a story. Telling a story. See, I can tell you a story right now. One of the things that make our pop, our popcorn so good is that we pop our corn in coconut oil, which we know is a little is healthier than most than using any other type of oil. You know, even comparing to air pop, but that coconut oil. Then, after we pop it, we go through the process of sifting our corn, corn to get the small pieces out and get as many holes out, so that you don't have those in your in your in your teeth, as well as we're keeping you you're just getting quality popcorn. Then, when we coat it. We use more than the recommended. We use grade A cheese that we melt down and, and do it correct and you know and coat your popcorn at a heavy level. You know, just tell your story and however you season it. Talk about how you season your product. Now I gotta grab another bucket. But you gotta tell a story about your product that gets people interested in what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because if your story is simply the fact that you just opened up a company, then that's not that's not going to work. And you got to capture people at the emotional level. There was a young lady who came into the store yesterday. We we're talking about business. She opened up a turnkey business, meaning that when an apartment complex needs somebody to come in there and clean the apartment out after somebody moves, she goes in, she cleans it, she paints it, she fixes anything that needs to be fixed. So how does she sell herself to other apartment complexes? She can't just say we can do the job. No, she got to come in and talk about their turnaround. Talk about how they handle different issues if they, you know, when they're painting and and when they're priming, how they're going to do it. Are they spraying? Are they using rollers? What type of how are they protecting the carpet if it's still good? Or how do they clean the carpet? What kind of products they use to clean it? You got to go in and when you're making that sale, you got to tell a story that satisfy any challenges that the person may have as far as picking you. Just like when you go in for a job interview. I've seen so many people, when I used to be a um, sales manager at New Horizons Computer, Computer Learning Center, people would come in and think that their resume was enough. That wasn't enough. I wanted to know the story of who the person was because what I was looking for is how this person is going to fit on my team. That's what I want to know. Are you going to fit with my team? Are you going to be a disruption? Are you going to cause life to be more difficult on a day-to-day -day basis You know, at my, you know, while I'm working? That's what I wanted to know. You know, I can see the resume, I see you're qualified, but are you qualified as far as a team member? That's what I want to know. So and for your business, do you qualify yourself to your customers to the emotion of their satisfaction? You see, I'm making gourmet popcorn. So when I make it, the question is, does it have enough flavor? Are the kernels big and fluffy? How many holes are there in there? See, I gotta tell those stories. I gotta make sure people know it's not, I'm sifting this popcorn right now to make sure. What? That I don't get small pieces, you see? Let me show you. You don't want all of these kind of pieces in your popcorn, you don't want those. No, that's not what you want. No, you want these these bigger, fluffier pieces. You want these kind, of, these big pieces in there and they coat better. So you, I gotta tell that story. When people come in, they say, wow, how do you get your popcorn to be so big? You know, I, got, I tell them, I said, well, we use a special kind of kernel. Then we sift the popcorn to get the smaller pieces that don't pop big out. You now you tell that story to the customer that, so that they feel like, what? They're getting value for their dollar. You know, they're getting value for their dollar. I know popcorn companies, they don't sift their stuff at all. You know? And so I got to, and that's also something that helps separate me from them. Is that I'm making sure that I'm doing things that cause a distinction between me and my competitor. So that's the other thing about marketing in the time that you're in. Back in the day, you may have had only one of two of your businesses in your community, but now, that time is over. Now, it's a whole bunch of y'all. You got competition all around the world. Your competition is everybody, all around the world. Because people can ship products all around the world, just like we ship products. All right, so I just got some customers just walked in. We're not done. I'm going to go take care of these customers. Let me show you how we do customer service. Customer service lesson right here. Hello, how you guys doing?
Customer service. You just gotta make the customer happy. You just make the customer happy. Then you gotta wash your hands. All the time I wash my hands, then they ask me something else, then I gotta wash my hands again. But it's alright, but food safety. Um, but yeah, so back to it. That's how we take care of customers. So when you do have a customer come into your store, even though I had something to do, even though I got this popcorn back here and I need to hurry up and get it out the air and everything, you still gotta take care of the customer and you feel each customer. Because not every customer you can talk to the same way. Some customers you have to talk to in different ways. So that's another thing about marketing in the time day that you're in. Because you can't talk to every customer the same. You can't treat every customer the same. you got to meet the customer where they are. Because that customer is going to go out and they're going to talk about you. Now the question is, what do you want that customer to say about you? Do you want them to come in and say they had a great experience? Or they, they just had an experience, they just came in and got it. And you just ushered them right on out the door. No. You want them to have a great experience. And that was one of my buzzers. So I got to add something to this caramel. I can't tell y'all what I'm adding. So don't add. You know, so we got... Hands got all wet. But, um, you know, you talk to your customers different ways. Find out what's going on. Talk to them what they like, what they don't like. See, I just found out, you know, she came in with her mind made up on what she wanted, and that's cool. And I introduced a few other things, but then, then she realized, oh, wait, they got salt and vinegar as well, and they got spicy and other things. So that in itself is going to make her come back, right? And then it reminded her of home, so that's going to make her come back, and it's going to make her talk. So you get people talking about it, because word of mouth is still a great thing, but you got to figure out how do you get that word of mouth to generate and now word of mouth generates online. It generates on social media, Facebook, Instagram. You get people talking about your product is what you want people to be doing, talking about your product. That's the new form of word of mouth. Right? Now, and you gotta think future. My future customers, my customers five years down the line, where are they getting their information? 
how are they going to talk about my father? You know, they're going to be talking about it. These little young ones, they come in here. Even though the younger kids are not my customers so much, right now, I want them to be my customers. You grew up in Atlanta. You may have went to varsity. Now, me right now, I'm not going to varsity anymore. But when I was a kid, I couldn't wait to go to varsity. We go on field trips, and one of the highlights of the field trip downtown to the capital was the fact that you would go to the varsity. Right? And then you talk about it. You talk about that thing all week. And you talk about it forever. And then there are college kids, there are adults now who they talk about the fact that they remember going to the varsity while they was in college and all this stuff about going. They're still talking about Facebook did a little thing right there. But they're still talking about how they went to the varsity, right? And they bought, you know, and they're telling their kids about it. So now their kids are growing up knowing about the varsity. So you create that generational marketing by even in treating the younger generation today so that they're talking about you later and they're talking to their kids and talking to their friends and family. So you always got to be thinking like where's the next level of attention that people are going to have and that's what you're supposed to do as a business owner. You have to find their attention, where they're focused at and then meet them there. I really don't want to get involved in Snapchat right now but you know what I do know? I know that I have to get involved with Snapchat right now because even though the people on Snapchat are not my customers, 18 year olds, 20 year olds are not my customers. A woman that's 25, 27 and up, 30 years old with some, with some money who, who understands a gourmet product, that's my customer. But what I do know is that five, 10 years from now, those people on Snapchat will be my customer. So I gotta catch them now on Snapchat, keep them engaged, when they move on to whatever's coming up in the next five years, I gotta move on with them. That way, it's kind of like a network marketing company. You move your downline from one company to the next company to the next company, and you keep doing that and keep making money. You gotta move your marketing from whatever it is capturing their attention now to what's capturing their attention in the next three to five years, and so on and so forth. You gotta stay on. You can never stop, right? And then when you capture that attention, like I said, you gotta consistently and continuously tell stories and make people aware of it. And here's the thing, you gotta retell the same story. So today, I talked about strawberry cheesecake. Probably in about two months, I'll be talking about strawberry cheesecake again. Why? One, as a reminder. Two, I would have acquired new customers and they need to hear about it. But you're still talking about it, you're still telling those stories. And then as I make other flavors that I'm just making for whenever and however, I'm still telling that story. So in your business, you still got to tell that story. You know, some of you guys on there, let me know. I want to know what kind of business are you in right now? What, biz what business do you have? And some of you have the ability to have a business, but you're not even using it. Like, there's a young lady who's on this right now. Um, I'm going to put her out there on front street, Lolita. Lolita has a following in talking about things that people don't necessarily talk about in the public eye. But... If she, she started broadcasting, started um, Skype, not Skyping, what's the thing called? Periscope and Facebook Live and YouTube Live and started doing those things on the subjects that she is very interested in, you build a following. It may take you five or six years to build that following into something that pays you money. But now you're talking about all your little stuff that you talk about on your Facebook page and now you've created a business based on it but you start now right and you start talking about that you know? so you know Lolita and I know that you live near my store I'm telling you you should be online in a podcast you should be doing a, a blog you should also have a periscope talking about what you always talk about on your Facebook you know start up a private group I got another customer I'm gonna go get this customer show how you see Hey, how you doing? Alright, and that's another thing right there. When you get a customer that you're familiar with, you gotta start remembering what your customer, your usual customer, what they like. Now I have a hard time with that, but I'm getting better. Now I know y'all heard that buzzer go off. So what is that buzzer? 
I'm making some caramel. I'm gonna show y'all what it looks like. But it looks good. Right. It's some good stuff. So, let me make this caramel. Yeah. I need this in order to do it. Now we make our product. This caramel comes out. It's nice. It's hot. Uh, if I didn't need both my hands, I would show you guys exactly what I'm doing with it. But at this point, I need both my hands. But as soon as I don't need both my hands, I'm going to show you exactly how this caramel looks. We make all of our products here at the store. No crazy stuff. I mean, caramel is sugar and it's, it's all we make it from scratch. That's all I'm saying. We make it from scratch. I ain't gonna tell you my recipe. You can look up and find different recipes from care Mine is mine and mine is gonna be mine. So we make this product here every day, all day. And this works with, with loud, with noisy. Guys got to come and try my If you can't get here, you can order it online. And uh oh. Had my phone propped up. See, this is that caramel right here. Keep it moving, right? So it don't stick to you. Together. Yeah. That's our caramel. So, let me go help these customers. Y'all don't go with me. We're going to go talk to these customers right here. How you doing? I'm doing a Facebook Live right now. Go ahead. Oh, no. I'm going to take care of you while I'm doing this. See, this is one of my favorite customers. See them right there? <laughs> See, she come here all the time. I do. And usually she gets her bacon jalapeno, but she wants to flip it up on me today. I do. But she, even when I move my location, she followed me down here. So awesome, awesome customer. And this is what I'm telling you guys. You got to keep track of your good customers. You got to make sure they're taken care of. You don't ever want to mess up on your good customers because they're the ones that keep you around. Now, okay. what can I get you? I think it's that third one on the top of there. This one? Yeah, then the man come in and get that while I'm still in there. Well, got a lot. I don't know if you got an ATL pop or ATL pop with cashews. So you got, this is caramel coated with cheese. And one got cashews, one no. That's the difference. And then, of course, one's a platinum, and then one's a. Uh, I got it one gold. time, and I, you charged me $6 for a small. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, did. Everything is $6. That would have been a bronze. That would have been a cheese. Now, see, sometimes your customers think they're right, but they're <laughs> wrong as all get out. Because they ain't never had a cheese. 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 I think he got the ATL pop. I don't think he got the one with cashews. I do recall who you're talking about. Uh huh. I said, oh, I eat that up before tomorrow. But you understand, they're both the same, just one got cashews and one don't. So it just comes down to if you want cashews or not. How you doing, lady? Welcome to Uncle Ren's Popcorn. This your first time visiting? Okay, well, welcome back. See, sometimes I don't remember everybody's face. There's your door for you know your mom be harassing me all the time? She be harassing me. She be harassing me. Is that the one? I'm quite positive. I do recall that guy. So. <laughs> and did you already know what you like? A large white cheddar. A large white cheddar? Alright. See, that's the other thing y'all gotta do. Sometimes you gotta move the case. So we're gonna do a small ATL pot? You good on that one?
just so you know, I was doing a Facebook live broadcast, so I'm talking to people on Facebook at the same time. I'm doing everything. I was talking about business and marketing and how you got to take care of your customers. Right. Now, you guys do know that if you tag us or like if you do a check in on Facebook. <laughs> Media 10% off your purchase. And it's, a, it's an in store thing that you have to do. So you have to do it like right now. You can. You can do a Facebook check in. You know how to do that? You just do the Uncle Ren's popcorn, one is in by Sunday. Okay? That way you should get a 10% discount. Ain't gonna exactly bring it all the way down to $6, but it brings it. <laughs> it'll put you down there in the $7 range. How about that? I heard that. Does that make you happy? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you gotta get you a pop of happiness in here. Pop of happiness. Yeah. Okay. So you say you might have to check in, right? So just go where you want. No, you go to your Facebook page on your news feed, and then you know, like when you do a post for show, and when it says check in, you go check in. And then I'll just come in. It's gonna be 7 7. With your 10% gift, yeah, with your 10% discount, only 770. And y'all, what she had got was our ATL Pop. ATL Pop is a caramel coated with cheese. That's our number one seller. It's better than that Chicago style, just by the way. Uh, and right now, well, you normally get bacon. I do, I do. You threw me out for a minute. Thank you, thank you. Nice meeting you, young lady. And how are you doing? How was your weekend? Good. That's fantastic. I work the whole time. Jungle Book movie, but, but it's still out there, so I go see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna some blues on it. Now, what she got is a white chair. She got a large white chair, y'all. There's some good stuff, too. When you come get this order online. Now, did you hear when you tag it? Have you tagged us on your. You don't have Facebook? You got Instagram? You got any social media? None? You're gonna have to work on that. <laughs> You on the lamb? <laughs> you know, I said that to like a little young kid. They ain't know what that means. It's all right. It's all right. I'm working on something else. I'm working on another process in order to allow people to get discounts and things like that. Because just because, because you know, I'm saying not everybody's on social media, which goes to a point that I was making to my the, on this video is that in not everybody's on social media. 1177. So. Right, so when people aren't on social media, you got to figure out a different way to contact those people. Which one method is just by by the chance that every, you may not be on social media, but you know people. Oh yeah, oh So they may tell you about something that they find. Right, and that's that new word of mouth because people they find out on social media and they tell you about it. Now you show up, you may not be on it, but you found out. Second hand, second degree through social media. So. Okay, that works just as well. Exactly, it works just as well. Mm -hmm. And then we just, and then we get, we capture you then, get you in here. All right, thank you much. I appreciate you. See, one of the things that you do is that if you show your customers that you're interested in their lives and what's going on with them, then they generally will have a greater appreciation for you as well because then they start coming in. Because why? Because they're coming in because of the experience of your customer service is one of the reasons why they now come in the door. 
and you want to make sure of that as well. I gotta wash my hands. Now. is the fact that they went to Starbucks and got an experience, you know? And that experience, that experience allowed them to be able to, they, that allowed, that created something that made them come back over and over again. The experience that they received while they were at Starbucks. So if you got a restaurant, you know, there's a restaurant that I recently visited. The restaurant has good food, but the way the restaurant is set up, People who are walking in to do a pickup, a pickup order, are right there, all crowded around where you actually sit down and eat as well. Now, what this does, it takes away from your experience of enjoying the restaurant. So, for me, if I want to go have a sit-down dinner, it's not the place I would go. To. So, they could be losing my business, maybe about. 10, 15, 20 times a year simply because if they put a false wall up that allowed me to have separation between the people who are there just to do a pickup and the people who are there to um, to, to sit and eat I would probably go, I would go there more often but it's not set up correctly so even when you're building your company and you're building your store you got to think about the customer experience of how they purchase from you how they walk in what do they see how, what's the experience that they have when they're in your in your business? And if your business is a service business, then what's the experience you're giving them? Even if, if it's a janitorial service, right? Um, when I first got out of Marine Corps, that was the first business I opened. It was a janitorial service. And the first couple people that I had were law officers. And what I did was, is every night when I would go in there and clean in the morning, I would leave different little pieces of chocolates first on the counters, on the desk of everybody's desk, right? Little piece of chocolate. You know, just let them know. Didn't cost me hardly nothing. You know, you go buy that big old bag of chocolate, you leave one little piece of bar on there, it's cool. You know. Then one person left me a note saying that they were allergic to nuts, didn't like nuts, but they wouldn't mind if I left them um, one of the you know the pieces the Hershey's without the nuts in it. So now what happened? This person they became connected with the fact that I was leaving them a piece of chocolate to the point where they were making sure that I knew what their allergies were. So that experience, me cleaning up their office, the experience for them was not only a clean space, but knew that every morning when they walked in, that they were going to have a piece of chocolate, a piece of candy, whatever, on their desk. You know, and people, it's little small things like that that we think may not count. Like here, I got a little popcorn button. And it has mints in it. I used to do candy, but um, I was eating all the candy myself throughout the day, and I'm not trying to eat all the candy. But I would leave that. But customers can come. They know they get them a little mint to go with their popcorn. Um, if they had self-contained, individually wrapped little toothpick things that didn't cost that much, I would probably do that as well. Because, I mean, you know, you eat popcorn, you get holes in your teeth. You want to get that out. So it's a little, basically what I'm saying, little small things like that go a long way because you're creating that experience, that love of the business, that love of your business to your customer. And when they become, what you want them to become is loyal, loyal to your business. I shot a video earlier today, a young lady, she came, she drives all the way from McDonough, Georgia to here, which is like 30 minutes. You know, she's driving during the traffic time in Atlanta, and you know, traffic in Atlanta is horrible. But she drove, she drives here at least once a week, passing at least three or four other popcorn shops to get here. Why? Because of the loyalty, because of the experience. She will send me a message, let me know she's on her way. One, to make sure that I, I don't, I have her, she comes for two flavors. Salt and vinegar and spicy white. She want to make sure I got it. So, A, 
she sends me a message to make sure I got it. And then I have it sitting here waiting for her. But if I'm low on it, at least I know I need to go ahead and make it before she gets here. Two, when she walks in the door, if she's in a rush, her product is already made. You know, so she's getting that extra customer service. Now from that, the next thing I, I, I need to fit, I'm going to figure out, and it's not really that hard really, it's just adding something to my website. I'm going to allow for her and other customers to be able to go online, put their order in, put that code in for, so that I know that they're going to pick up. And then that way when they walk in the door, if I got customers who are just sampling, they haven't figured out what they wanted, I can go ahead and process those people who came in just to pick it up and go. You know, So it opens up that ability to open up that door as well. You see, and you got to be on your, and that's the thing about marketing. You got to always be thinking about things like that. You know, the thing about marketing is that marketing and advertising are different. Marketing encompasses the entire strategy. You see, advertising is just a, is, is a bunch of tactics, right? I'm going to do print media. I'm going to do Facebook. I'm going to do Wi-Fi in my store. I'm going to do, you know, taste tests and all these kinds. Of, these are all tactics that add up to an over, overarching strategy. That strategy encompassing your marketing of telling a story that makes people loyal to your brand, right? So there's advertising, which is just letting people know who you are and what you have and what you do and how you do it and that sort of thing. But the marketing is telling your story. The marketing is telling people to want to be attached to you, to love you, to fall in love with you, to defend you over others. When somebody else has something to say about you, they're defending you, you know, because you've created a loyal customer base, right? Because you've done things, you've created experiences for them, you've created, you've shown them how much you care about them before um, they show you how much you care about, uh, before they show you how much they care about you. You've done that first. And by doing that, now you have people who love you, right? And they're going to go to bat for you. So, you know, you guys ain't making this easy because y'all are not asking me any questions whatsoever. Now, Lolita, I gave you an idea. I expect you to do it. I'm be looking for it. All right. And some of you guys, you got different business ideas inside you. But you just got to get over your fear and let it loose. You know, you got to be willing to take that leap of faith. And guess what? You're never too old. You're ne I'm finished sifting this popcorn. This is all I'm, I'm not sifting any more popcorn today. But you're never too old to start your business, to chase your dreams, to get involved in that thing that you want. See, we pop, we sift it. You see how the kernels are big? And fluffy, right? That way, it coats back. Woo. Yeah, I got you guys like sitting up on stuff. I'm gonna tear this phone up doing that. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it allows you to do that kind of thing. You want to be able to do that for your customers, right? Create that experience, guys. That's what you have to do every day, and it's a, it's a continuous work. It's an everyday work. It never stops. You're gonna be doing this for the life of your company, right? This is my caramelizer. This is what I use ouch, to make caramel. Just got burnt by some hot water. Right? But you're going to be doing this for your customers, for yourself. And then after a while, it almost gets on autopilot. Right? Where you don't even have to worry about it too much. And it becomes easy. It's a pain when you first start doing it. When you first start doing some of this marketing thing, you start... Because I know, if you're a cook like me... I gotta make the popcorn. Then I gotta take care of the customer. Then I gotta make sure the supplies are kept. There. Then you gotta um, you gotta keep everything clean. Then you gotta keep a tr keep track of all the stuff that the state and the city and the county and everybody else requires of you. You gotta do all these things, and you're expected to go out and do all this marketing as well. You got doggone right. Because if you don't do it, then what happens? is that you start losing business. Your business starts dropping. Now I'm put you guys down for a second. I gotta go take this popcorn. See, I cheat. I'm putting it on the freezer so it'll cool off faster. Customers 
need, should know that vision. Your employees should know that vision. But everything you do should be working towards you getting to that vision, that point where you under, you're, you're living, your world is how you want your world to be. You see, many people think of vision, they confuse it with goals, right? Gold gets you to your vision. You see, your vision should be how your world is expected to look. And your goal should be things that get you there. See, having a nice car and the house and the spouse and all those kinds of things, those are goals to achieve for the way you want your world to be, for how you envision your life. You see, I envision my life of businesses flourishing and I'm not present at each individual business. I'm not popping the corn, taking care of the customers, doing the training, finding the new locations, building the locations out. I'm not doing any of those things. I got other people who've been trained in a system to do those things for me while I am just overseeing the major vision of the company and where I want the company to go, but I get to live the vision of my life. The vision of my life is waking up in the morning and going to play golf in the morning and then having a business meeting around one o'clock, finding out what's been going what you know, what's happened the previous day with everything, where we're moving forward with other projects, things like that. Meeting with my accountant to find out where things are and then it just enjoying my kids and grandkids and wife and all those kind of things. That's the vision of my life, seeing the world, studying different cultures and ancient cultures. That's my vision of my life. But in order to get there, in order to have that life, I need to have a certain amount of money in my life. Now, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I probably wouldn't run a business anymore, to be honest. Even though I do love, I love the idea of business, I love creating business. So I probably still would have a business, but I don't know how much of that I would be doing, but anyway, the thing is, is that you got to have a vision for your life, a vision for your company. You got to get everybody involved in that vision. And your marketing should fit that vision. Good gracious. You see? Okay, this platform that I'm sitting this on is not good when I am moving some heavy stuff around. And there are not many platforms in there for me to set this phone. We're going to see. Uh, uh, we're just going to finish talking before I sign off. Because, you know, with this Facebook Live, you only get an hour of time. And amazingly, we're already at 46 minutes. But like I was saying, guys, in your marketing, turn the music down. Your marketing, you got to market for how the world is today. Let me show you this right here. You know, my customers, see how they're coated? They, wanna, they want that caramel to be nice and coated. This is part of the market to have this caramel out here in the front because people get to see the process and by seeing some of the process for some of them that intrigues them because why they know that oh it's made here and it's made fresh it's not something that's shipped in and if you can do things like that in your business that's cool that's great now if it's a service then you always want to go above and beyond in your service so all those little things don't 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 shortchange the small things thinking that that doesn't matter those things matter hugely like, there's a hair salon next door to me. I encourage the young, the, the daughter who works there. She's, the daughter is like 10 years old, 10, 11 years old. I told her last summer, I said, look, when you're there over the summer, you should like walk around and serve the people's little coffee, little tea, little snacks and whatnot, whatnot, and then have a little tip jar. That, not only does that make the little girl some money, but look at what it does for the shop. I, I, I don't, I'm not a woman, I don't go to the beauty salon. But if you have a beauty salon, wouldn't it be nice if your customers were offered coffee, if they were offered, um, you know, different little products like that, if they were offered, you know, a little little piece of chocolate or candy or whatever, if they had those kinds of things, then you're making their experience better. I mean, if I was going to a barbershop, I would want to go to a barbershop where maybe I'm offered some water, a little small bottle of water, or maybe I'm offered a little something, a little treat or anything. Because why? I, I you know if, if they're creating that experience for me, I'm gonna keep coming back, and I want to keep coming back. You know? And it's all kinds of little things like that you want to do for your company, you know. Um, you know, and if you uh, let's say you are a hairstylist, teach the people about he healthy hair. Do seminars about how to keep their hair healthy, how to keep their scalp healthy, how to um, have keep their you know work on their skin, their makeup. Bring in a makeup consultant to talk to the people about their makeup and things like that. You take a seat.
you know, we set up a little seating area, got the television there. Gotta watch the Hawkins tomorrow night. But, you know, uh, make it so that what you provide them is something that they don't normally get any place else. Make it new, make it exciting for them to come to your, your salon. You know, um, you know, if I, if, like I said, if I had a salon, I would have, you know, seating like this where people can sit comfortably while they wait for their turn. And then while they're getting their stuff done, yeah, I want to provide them water and tea and, and maybe some little, the little mini cinnamon rolls and things like that. And other people taking care of them, like, you know, in that frame where I got some more customers walking in. So those are things new. How you guys doing? Hi. All right, welcome to Uncle Ren's Popcorn. I'm just shooting a little video, and you guys are on it. Don't be afraid. You're all right. Is this you guys' first time come visiting? All right. Oh, okay. So you had to see you in the light, you know, coming in. I recognize you.